Today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Extra, helping you build some of that juicy, juicy credit. Do you live in a world where credit is a big concern? I know I do. When it comes to buying a house, any asset, any vehicle, anything tangible, well, they're always going to check your credit. And sometimes it may not be where you want it. And that's where Extra comes to help you. By creating a card that allows users to connect their uh, card to their bank accounts, an Extra will actually look into their bank account and give them a spending limit based on what they actually have. Extra will spot you for everyday purchases and then basically cover all of those the next business day. And at the end of that month, they'll obviously take all of those purchases, tabulate them, and send them to credit bureaus as credit-worthy payments. Specifically, Experian and Equifax. And of course, if you're a gamer, you know you love those microtransactions. And with Extra's credit building and their award plans, you can actually earn a plethora of benefits alongside points that can be used towards redeeming for various items as well. As somebody that once tried to buy a home and was laughed at at the exorbitant interest rates of Canada, I too had to once build up credit. And thankfully, it's a lot easier these days. So if you're interested, go check out extra.app slash SOG. Extra is a technology company. Extra debit card is issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member of the FDIC, pursuant to a license from MasterCard USA. Extra reports on time and late payments, which may negatively impact your credit score. Credit scores are independently determined by credit bureaus based on a number of factors, including your other financial transactions. Extra reports to Experian and Equifax. Reward points only available with reward plans. Please refer to extra.app slash policies for additional details. Lights are on! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Uh, today, I want to just straight up tell you, I know we already have the sponsor segment, so it's not like I jumped in out of nowhere. But uh, Flipper Zero, I ended up getting the wild, wacky TikTok device that apparently lets you steal those cars. <laughs> or just open Tesla charge ports, okay? Let's just demystify everything. Now, to understand, this is one of those interesting devices that I came across through a friend. And uh, I've been kind of following because uh, it's been an interesting sort of like sub gigahertz, sort of a Swiss army knife, if you will. I kind of look at this more like a black light that sort of unveils the hidden world around me. I think that was a spider in the corner. I really hope to God it isn't. For anybody that doesn't know what a Flipper Zero is, according to the website, it is a portable multi-tool for pen testers and geeks and a toy-like body. It loves hacking digital stuff such as radio protocols, access control systems, hardware, and more, fully open source and customizable. Now, of course, I ended up picking up this device, and I want to start off by saying there is a, a bit of a challenge in picking up the Flipper Zero. I had to navigate and dodge a bunch of scams personally. Uh, there's a lot of resellers that aren't verified. So if you want to buy this, go to their website, which they have complete access of. Go hit buy now, and before anybody in America goes, dang, it's that easy, they do not ship to the United States. As far as we know, the only partner they have is Joom, which is the way I took. Uh, literally, I almost almost didn't get this device because it tried to order a device through the United States for me, which immediately got cut off. Um, so luckily, it, Canada is one of the listed countries, God bless. One of the scams that I've seen floating around, and again, I can't verify the authenticity because I'm not American, but uh, typically from a reseller, somebody bought a device and they ended up receiving literally nothing except this letter, where uh, it appears that uh, the scammer is personating uh, a federal agent of the United States, which is a postal service worker. So if you've been scammed in this way by any Flipper Zero reseller, please, for the love of God, report this to the U.S. agencies, and I would be hard-pressed to find them not taking this seriously. Any impersonation of a federal agent, no matter what rank they are, is an impersonation of federal power, and if it's something that the U.S. government absolutely cannot lose its grasp over, it's its power, and they will absolutely take it to the ends of the earth. That said, tangent aside, let's get back to the Flipper Zero. I ended up getting the device. I think it cost somewhere around $200, $250 for it, but eventually it ended up coming in after a month of ordering it, and luckily it's here. All right, here it is. Boom, boom. Ready and ready to go. I've got it all played around with, got it all modified, got it all flashed, and we're ready to begin the adventure. Now, even according to Flipper Zero's own official posts, uh, I believe that is actually just Flipper Zero. Then again, a Twitter check mark means nothing anymore. Bad news. U.S. Customs have seized a container with 15,000 flippers purchased in September. That was back in October 2022 that they mentioned this. So again, to understand if you're American trying to get access to a Flipper Zero may be a tougher ask. Um, you may have to drive to or, or fly to these other countries to pick up this device. 
Uh, but even then, I don't know the legality of bringing it back to the United States. I don't know if it's necessarily illegal to own this in the United States. It doesn't seem that way, but uh, just pointing it out there. Anyways, let's get to the fun. Now, immediately when I bought the Flipper Zero, it ended up coming with the Flipper Zero device itself, but it also ended up coming with, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, flimsiest, the smallest looking USB-C to USB cable I've ever seen. Lord knows what I'm gonna do with one of these. <laughs> and uh, of course, not much else. Make sure when you buy one of these, always get a micro SD card with it. It does not ship with one. And if you don't have a micro SD card, you are not doing anything with the Flipper Zero. So anyways, once I ended up getting that, updating the firmware, uh, I ended up having a device that uh, had a bunch of features attached to it. Now to understand, there's a few different GitHubs you can go to. Uh, there's actually a few different custom firmware ROMs and packages of applications you can download for the Flipper Zero. Uh, I highly recommend Recommend if you have one of these devices, look around, download a few of those tools because they definitely extend the functionality of this device. So again, looking at the functionality of the Flipper Zero when we fire it up, we start off immediately with a dolphin. This is the mascot of the Flipper Zero. Um, it's got a little small LED screen, almost feels like a, a Tamagotchi for anybody who's uh, old enough to remember one of those. But of course, hitting the middle button takes you to a laundry list of different things you can do. Now, starting from the top, we've got applications. So in this case, I've installed a few different applications, uh, things like Doom, for instance, games, if you will. Uh, yes, there is a functional version of Doom. It even has audio. Did I tell you that? But of course, Doom, uh, a, a version of it ported to the uh, product actually works. Um, and uh, it's it, it's Doom, that's all I'm gonna say, all right? It's nothing that crazy. I wouldn't be playing hours of this, it just is an option. But of course, beyond just having the most basic games in the world, you've also got multiple different tools like hex viewers, USB keyboard mices, barcode generators, various different applications and scripts that the community has written for the device. But what's most important is this sub gigahertz frequency right over here. This is probably one of the uh, top pieces, the, the creme de la creme of the, of the Flipper Zero device. Now with the sub gigahertz, this is probably one of the best tools to read radio frequencies around, manipulate them, catalog them, and basically emulate them as well too. Now, for a lot of you who don't know, there's a lot of stuff that works off of sub gigahertz frequencies. Uh, one of the most important aspects that I want to really look into are things like vehicles, for instance. Now, immediately when you open up uh, TikTok, which is where the popularity of this device really rose to stardom, uh, you had a lot of people showcasing uh, vehicle hacks, if you will, too. For instance, this one user showcases the Honda Civic being hacked uh, via the Flipper Zero. So effectively, they put their car keys over there, they grab the Flipper Zero device, and uh, with the Flipper Zero, what they've done is they've basically recorded the frequency that takes off of the uh, car key and basically are able to lock and unlock their Honda Civic. Now, from what I understand, this is actually not fake in this case because the Honda Civics, from what I've been able to read, do not have rolling codes, which we'll get to in a little bit. But uh, so in some capacity, depending on the vehicle, the make, the model, the year, the security implementations present, you might be able to do some wild shenanigans. So to explain this in the best way possible, I'm gonna show you how this works. Now in front of me, I've got two car key fobs, okay? I've got a Tesla Model S key fob, which is this little like rinky dinky, like Hot Wheels vehicle uh, fob. And then I've also got the uh, Mustang uh, GT key fob as well too. So of course, both of these key fobs, while they work for different vehicles, each have radio functionality within them. The way that a key fob works is whenever you press the lock key, the unlock key on a key fob, you are sending out a radio signal to your car. Now, each car is tied specifically to a key fob, meaning that if you were to park, let's say, one Mustang next to another Mustang in the street, each of those Mustangs would only respond to the key fob uh, that is tied to them. Now, the way that these key fobs work and should work in most cases is through rolling codes, meaning that there is a seed on these keys in the car and the car recognizes each of the actual codes thrown from these keys. So if I hit the lock switch right now, the lock key, my car is gonna give a little response down in the driveway. That's because it is always reading for this key and the codes that it sends out. Now, what the Flipper Zero you can do with it is you can open up the sub gigahertz system, you can go to read, and actually not just read, I believe you want to go to Frequency Analyzer. Now in Frequency Analyzer, you can see that right now we're sitting at like uh, zero, zero megahertz, right? Now if I hit the lock switch on my, uh, on my key fob, you'll notice that the Flipper Zero 
will recognize this as 314.979. So the frequency picked up is 315 megahertz, right? Which is the uh, megahertz that this key fob is operating within. Now, of course, if I want to go and specifically read what's going on over there, I can look at 315 and I can actually read RAWs. So I'm gonna hit record on the actual, uh, you know, flipper zero. I'm gonna hit lock and immediately you'll see that my flipper zero is reading every time I hit the lock switch on my Mustang key fob, right? So again, you can record a few of these and you effectively have codes that you can then save onto the actual flipper zero and you can then send back. Now, again, the way that rolling codes work and why these TikToks tend to fail or these car hacks is that if the car picks up these, you know, pings, then uh, it's already blo blocked it out of the system, meaning that whatever I replay out of the flipper zero will not work. Now, this could technically work if I was so far away from my car that it was unable to read the radio signal. If I picked up a few of these and recorded it on the flipper zero, then I went back to the car and played with the flipper zero, the car would respond because it's never seen those codes before. The way that rolling codes work is once it picks up a specific code from the fob, it blacks it out so it'll never process it again from my understanding. If it's never heard of them and it only hears of them from the actual flipper zero, then it may unlock or lock the car. But you do risk actually breaking the uh, functionality of your actual fob. And these things are expensive, so would not even bother. Now the real world case of this hack, so to speak, would be that if somebody actually had your key and was reading the signals from it. A lot of people do do this. There are actual hacks and thefts that happen with modern day vehicles. But of course, a lot of those hacks tend to happen from my understanding, whenever you have like leaked software from like a car manufacturer. Now, of course, I don't have to explain to you uh, how much this falls flat is if you have this anyways, what's the point of reading frequencies and playing around? If you already have this, just steal the car. Sometimes instead of a flipper zero, the tried traditional bat to the face method and sealing the car fob that way is the method most people use to, to hack into vehicles. A lot of people look at watchdogs and kind of look at hacks like that, like, oh, this Aiden ran up to a car and, and unlocked it through his phone and just immediately started driving it off. If vehicle hacking and fob hacking was genuinely that easy, then um, trust me, car manufacturers would be freaking out. Cars would be getting stolen left and right if all you needed was like a $300, $200 like uh, flipper device in order to steal any car you wanted. Now, this begs the question as to what about those Tesla hacks I've been seeing, Muda? What Tesla hacks? Let's look at this. How is this even legal? Let's watch. Okay. So we've got the uh, person with the flipper zero. They're playing back a, uh, I think, a signal right over here, so to speak. Uh, yeah, they've got some signals over here. So they're going to play it back. They've got a Model 3 up there. And as they play it, you'll notice the charge port open. Oh no, what are you gonna do? They opened up the deck and charge port there, fellas. So again, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't wild indeed. What's effectively happening over here is they have found the radio signal that Teslas use as the superchargers and home charging networks. If you have a home charging Tesla or like if you just have a Tesla charger at home or you've ever been to a supercharger, they have a little button on the actual little uh, charge um, stick, little uh, connector. That button sends out a radio signal that'll just open any charge cap on a Tesla, right? So this isn't necessarily a security feature. This is just the Tesla listening to a reading, like the Tesla listening to like a, uh, you know, radio frequency. And once it hears it, it'll just open its charge port. Again, uh, just if Tesla engineers are watching, why the, why the fuck don't we have the ability to just only open it from the actual little middle screen in the car, the, 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 you know, the, the central screen or through the app on the phone. Why are we even going down the radio signals? I have no idea. It's an insane world. Maybe it's for the service center. I don't know. It's a wild thing. Stop it, Tesla. Stop that. But then again, what do you expect from a car manufacturer that literally made the high beam button on their car touch capacitive? Whoever thought that was a good idea should absolutely be fired. No questions asked without severance pay. Now, again, there's plenty of tools that you can find on the internet. I will not be linking these where you can download those same Tesla things, those same Tesla exploits, uh, and use them to open any charge port. I think this is personally troll behavior, fatherless behavior. Um, m probably is illegal, though... Again, finding a cop bored enough to enforce it would be a totally different story. Again, just a troll thing to do. Wouldn't recommend you do it. Really dickish thing to be doing. And uh, again, that's pretty much where the extent of it lies. You cannot steal a Tesla 
via this method, okay? The Tesla key fob works literally like that Ford Mustang key fob, sends out radio signals, and also, when you sit inside a vehicle, there's a further extra layer of encryption and authentication requir required to bypass the engine immobilizers in those cars. Not so much a Tesla, because they don't have engines, but you get the idea. There's an extra security layer on these fobs that the Flipper Zero just simply cannot work with. Now, one of the interesting things that I've seen out of the radio tax on this is, for instance, some users have actually used this to manipulate the gas prices on billboards. So if you've ever actually seen one of these, it's super wild. Basically what this guy does is he walks around with a Flipper Zero and uh, plays an entire like signal that, by the way, if you look real closely, will actually uh, change the uh, gas, uh, the, the, the price to zero, zero on the entire like billboard out there. So again, Highly illegal to do this, but another case example is right here. So this user actually brings out the Flipper Zero again, sends out a signal, and that signal messes up with the billboards and causes the prices to change. Again, this is, might I remind you, highly illegal. But the way that this works is a lot of those gas stations typically do run on a remote control. So somebody in the actual gas station is sitting there with a remote control, manipulating things that way. As long as you have the actual um, you know, frequencies and the signals to send, you can use the Flipper Zero just like that remote and change gas prices. Although, highly illegal, should never do it, but it's one of those examples of sub gigahertz attacks, which I think is the real highlight of this product, the sub gigahertz. It's why I'm focusing on this really hard, because it's where a brunt of the videos and the memes and the, and, and the popularity comes from. But a lot of what I wanna do is demystify. Look, a lot of this information is floating around freely in the air, but I think the important part is, because the barrier of entry to the Flipper Zero is dramatically lessened, it's going to cause a lot of these companies and groups to refocus on security and maybe tighten things up going on forward. We're literally looking at security protocols that haven't been updated in like decades at this point, years. It's, it's bad, but hopefully with the heightened attention, things will change. Now, of course, you've also got 125 kilohertz RFID, so you can store, read, scan RFID badges. NFC is interesting. I've seen some people act like, oh no, what about my actual credit cards getting stolen, Muda? What if somebody steals my credit cards? Now, of course, to start off with, credit card theft is a real thing, okay? However, the Flipper Zero is not going to allow you to steal credit cards and use them at any terminal imaginable. So to understand, modern credit cards, if they have a, and again, I'm gonna use my credit card, I'm gonna hide as many things as I can. I'm gonna to try to hide even the company and names. Typically have NFC capability. So the way that NFC capability works, near field communications, is when you go to a terminal, you typically get asked to tap your card, it reads the information on the card, processes it very quickly, and boom, you're out of the shop. You've already handled your payment. So, the Flipper Zero's NFC tool allows you to effectively read, so the back of the actual tool comes with like an NFC reader, so if you just attach your card, like so, you can actually read the, uh, the actual uh, credit card information. Now, I'm going to block as much as I can, because I don't want my credit card numbers or anything to be leaked out. Now, I've come across two different scenarios. So, one is my Visa card, which is a Visa credit card. It gave me my number, and that was it. Now, if I took a debit card, what was interesting is with my debit card, it gave me expiration dates and so on and so forth. In neither of these tools was my, uh, you know, three digit security code ever provided. Now, every single online retailer I've ever been to has always asked for the three digits at the back of my credit card. Nobody has ever pressed, uh, processed my credit card without those security codes. However, not, online re not all online retailers are the same. So if somebody does grab your credit card, they may be able to commit fraud with it with a uh, sort of uh, unsecured vendor out there. Again, there are also further securities provided to you by your bank, by whoever issued your card. So you might have some protections there. But again, this is a prime example of why you should probably have an RFID uh, wallet or at least RFID sleeves that you can put your credit card in that prevent the Flipper Zero or any other NFC device from quickly scanning it. Now, the thing is, even if you scan and store the card on the Flipper Zero, you cannot use this to purchase or, or, or emulate your card because you don't have the encryption keys that would be stored on those cards. The Flipper Zero does not allow you to bypass that at all. And if you try to do so, you look like a total dumbass at a store. Now you might be like, but Muda, what about Apple Pay? What about Samsung Pay? What about Google Pay? Don't they copy your card? 
Not exactly. What they do is they take the information, like, like your credit card number, your name, your expiration date, the security code, and they contact your bank through the mobile app, through a text message, through calling, and your m bank will actually activate another virtual credit card located on your actual cellular device that'll act like a uh, proxy card, if you will. It's an entirely separate credit card with its own separate numbers that is authenticated at the bank level. There is no emulation going on. You're literally using a separate card. So again, the NFC tool, while it's scary and, and it definitely will like store credit card information if you walk by somebody and uh, the NFC badges just touch, but generally for most people, you don't have to worry about somebody using a flipper zero to grab your card and use it at a store. If it was that easy, credit card companies would literally be crying and pissing themselves that somebody can use a two, $300 security like device like this and be stealing credit cards and emulating them all over. The, the whole industry would be in severe pandemonium. Now, realistically, what I have been using the NFC for mostly is to just be like a little amiibo so I can actually just like uh, run amiibo stuff on my Nintendo Switch without digging out the amiibos. I literally have like a an all-in-one, like not all of my amiibos in one device that I can just use on the actual Switch. That's one of the reasons why I use it. I think the other practical reason is, let's say that you have a transit card. Instead of carrying the transit card around, you could theoretically just copy that card into this and emulate that all over because most transit cards for public transit services from my understanding don't come with a lot of encryption attached to them. You literally just tap and go. You may be able to store them all in this and move on. However, that functionality is also present in most modern smartphones anyways with NFC capability. So yeah, the NFC stuff is really cool, but ultimately you don't have to worry too much. Then you've got infrared, which uh, again, like I said, has a little infrared um, emitter at the top of the device, which you could use to control like AC units, um, depending on which, you know, AC unit and like you know, what it is. You could also use it to like open and close television. So like, let's say you're at a bar or something, you could like open a TV or like raise the volume. Not saying you should ever do that. Unauthorized use of any device, but your own can be a crime. So that functionality is present. Infrared technology is there. And again, <laughs> if you ask me why I've been using this device at all, it's literally just as a remote control for my bedroom television because uh, I'm just too lazy to go walk a few steps to grab it if I have the Flipper Zero right next to me. Same with any television in my house. As long as I dig this out, it serves as a universal remote. Now, interestingly, what you've got here is GPIO. So a special interface to connect this with Arduino devices and multiple other processors you can get. And this is where the things get real fun for the Flipper Zero. So at the top of the device, you'll notice all these pins are available, five volts and whatnot, and you can actually connect a GPIO interface through this and actually get access to a whole new suite of tools. So let's say you wanna do some like Wi-Fi attacks, if you will, right? Typically you could do things like Wi-Fi marauding. You could do like Wi-Fi Rick rolling, which is basically blasting SSIDs, like lyrics of music. So everybody who's like Wi-Fi cellular devices will literally just have lyrics of music or like junk SSIDs that are emitting through your Flipper Zero connected via GPIO. The other actual like really destructive thing you could do are elements like Wi-Fi deauthentication which is a Wi-Fi denial of service attack through this device too. Although you don't need a Flipper Zero to do it, any device will do it for you if you're smart enough and capable. Because again, the Flipper Zero is such a small lightweight device you can carry around, uh, it makes doing those practical hackery attacks just much more legit. It's kind of similar to like the watchdogs blackout or like when watchdogs, like when you play the game and you can like, you like disconnect somebody from a call or like, you know, DDoS them, if you will. It's kind of similar to that, although not as cool, right? Like it's, 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 it's one example you can do with the GPIO interface amongst plenty of other interfaces. And again, to do that, you'd need a separate board that doesn't come with the Flipper Zero. Unfortunately, I don't have it at the time of filming, but these boards are available over Amazon and whatnot that you can just get and, and learn and pen test on yourself. You've also got iButton, which I think are like Dallas keys. So security keys in that regard, you've got bad USB. So if you wanna like do USB attacks, basically you can have them enabled in the Flipper Zero. Connect this via USB, even the flimsy one I showed you in the beginning, and uh, launch some pretty nasty attacks on Windows devices, Linux devices, and Mac devices too.
You might have heard of a USB rubber ducky, which is used in hot plug attacks. So effectively, it's like an innocuous looking USB drive. As soon as you plug it in, it runs a whole bunch of scripts. Generally, if you know how to script for that, you can actually script for this as well. So again, in this entire package, you also get a USB rubber ducky, which you can use on PC or Windows. Mac, Linux, uh, Android, I believe even iOS. Now, one actual usable feature in this that I would use that's really not even hacking related is UTF, which is the ability to use the Flipper Zero as a uh, hardware security key. And I highly recommend if you ever are doing anything internet related, always tie your accounts to security keys and store them. Let's say you're a YouTuber and you don't want to get hacked. Having a security key is amazing. And while the Flipper Zero isn't perfect, it's a security-based one. So you kind of want a hardware-based security key too. Um, I believe the implementation is entirely software. It's great to have this because you can tie your YouTube accounts, your, your bank accounts to the security key. So let's say somebody wants to sign in. They need your Flipper Zero in order to get in alongside your password and whatever other two-factor authentication system you have. It's an extra layer of security you get with the Flipper Zero, although there are cheaper options out there and better options. This is just one extra kit of functionality on top of this amazing sub gigahertz controller. And of course, that's where the whole memes end, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Flipper Zero. Of course, it's an interesting device that one can do some rather interesting things with, but ultimately it kind of just ends over there. Now, there's a lot of tools and a lot of special firmwares that are actually available for the Flipper Zero. I'm using one called Unleashed, and typically you want to have a specialized firmware and more functionality and tools just so you can get the most out of your Flipper device. There's a lot of GitHubs floating around. I would stay away from the Discord servers because one Discord server in particular has a lot of adult photos being shared, um, which uh, again, if you want to keep everything safe for work, just stick to the GitHubs, okay? That's the only advice that I'm feeding you. Now, of course, you can download the code, flash the device, and it's super easy to flash. It takes like minutes, and you can just load this with extra functionality on top of extra functionality. Now, I know this video might have been dry and super technical, and, you know, I tried to put in as much laughs as I can. Ultimately, I wanted to do a proper look over of this device because it was really being talked around like it was the ultimate hacker pen testing device that was going to get your car stolen and, like, everything around your house leaked out and whatnot. And while a lot of the internet is filled with exaggerations, one thing that I can exaggerate upon is the coolness of the Flipper Zero device. I think it's interesting to have a device with this much functionality in such a small form factor in just your pocket. I think that's a big boon for it. And while the Flipper Zero is not a device that I would ever be scared of, and I don't think anybody should be scared of, period. The actual hacking functionality that could come out of a Flipper Zero is almost non-existent, and it's almost something you don't have to worry about. Again, for the hacks that I have told you about and I've showcased, uh, the actual practicality in anybody doing them is severely nil. Now, that being said, though, it's not to say that hacks cannot happen with the Flipper Zero. They absolutely could. Um, it's just... This is more an internet blacklight, if you will. It's more of a tool that allows you to see sub gigahertz frequencies and, and, and the unseen around us. In that respect, the Flipper Zero is amazing. As something to be feared and scared of, I think we're pushing it a little bit. But yeah, this was the Flipper Zero, the TikTok hacking device that's pretty much all over the rage. And I wanted to look at it and talk about it because I think uh, what it's done is it's opened up and sort of brought into the, uh, it, it's sort of like, I guess you could say the best thing to say is it sort of opened up a lot of normies' eyes into uh, the world around them, the world that surrounds them, the capability of computers and, and the exploits that are still sitting around them that are so easily exploitable, especially in terms of those gas station signs that I've shown you. And sometimes, you know, older vehicles and vehicles that don't have enough security parameters put into them. Look, at the end of the day, when it comes to this device, I think it's interesting. You should look at this more of like an internet blacklight tool that shows you the world around you in terms of, uh, you know, signals that you cannot see with the naked eye. And if anything, it should teach you about just how exploitable some things can be. And if anything, you know, I, I hope devices like the Flipper Zero can at least force some of these companies into re-looking at their security and re-looking at their frameworks and kind of updating it with the times. That said, though, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.